This is Steve Anderson from the USBA, and I'm speaking with Mazen Shuni. He's also a director uh, with the USBA, and we're on Skype. Uh, good evening, Mazen, and congratulations on your win with Hugo in the Pan American Team Championship. Well, thank you for inviting me to this interview. I'm very pleased to uh, share some of the experience that I had in Colombia last week. And uh, it was really a fantastic uh, experience I had. Uh, also, winning makes it more fun even, of course. Uh, and I was uh, involved with, with, with so many beautiful uh, people around me. Uh, the Colombians, they couldn't be any nicer. Um, one of the things I was impressed about uh, is the talent of the young players that I saw in Colombia. Uh, 18, 19, 20 years old, averaging 1.0 one, uh, 1 or better average, uh, and they have the heart of a lion. I mean, they, they, they're just, the game over there is so much more advanced and, and so much more popular than we have in the States. Uh, sorry to say that, but, uh, you know, we hope someday we'll catch on to that. Well, are they doing anything specific down there, Mason, to, uh, to uh, attract some of the young players? What are they doing? We're not. Well, you know, in most billiard rooms that we have in the States here, uh, uh, you walk in a billiard room and you see 20-some tables. Uh, there are probably 20 pool tables, and maybe we'd be lucky if we see one or two billiard tables in a corner somewhere, where the exact opposite is in Colombia. You walk in a billiard room, you see 20 billiard tables, and one or two pool tables somewhere in a corner that no one plays in them. So the difference is they promote the game a lot much stronger than we do uh, in terms of... Uh, bringing in the, uh, what we call the grassroots, the young players, uh, into the, the game. So that's, that's a huge. So about the actual matches or the tournament itself, I'd imagine you had uh, you and uh, Hugo had some, some uh, uh, Hugo had some tough uh, competition. Any matches that kind of stick out in your mind that were close? Or well, in the past, we have I have played one team championship at the Wooly Hoppy Cup in 2001 in Carom Cafe, where uh, I had Pedro Peter Buena as my my uh, teammate. And we did good as well. Uh, here I had Hugo Petino, and I didn't know how we were going to turn out or what I was expecting. But the the performance that we played, uh, we didn't put high averages like 1.5 or 1.6, but we we managed to win the necessary games. So we played very hard, we fought hard, and we played almost 1-2 average. So it was not uh, anything to be embarrassed about. It was a respectable average. Well, if I had a choice between having a high average or winning a tournament, I, I, I'd take option two. So. I, I agree. I agree with you. Winning is, is always important. Sure. I agree Ab with you. Absolutely. Well, we're we're proud of you, and uh, and Thank we you. Uh, we appreciate both of you going down there and and taking taking back the championship or whatever you want to say to the USA. So uh, hopefully you'll have a chance to go uh, next year as well. Uh, Hopefully. Yeah, absolutely. Well, um, anything else you want to talk about, uh, Kali? Well, well, first, first, I really want to give a special thank to the USBA for, for supporting us and sending us to Colombia to play in the team championship and the singles as well. Uh, uh, we, they know we had a, one of the, we are one of the strongest teams in South America and North America as well. Uh, so, so I think our chances were good to win. Uh, we came back with everything, uh, singles and doubles. Pedro Pisa Buena dominated for, uh, for the whole entire week. Uh, it was, it was very special for all of us. Uh, I want to thank our sponsors as well. Tiger Products and, and, and Berton, uh, my, my personal sponsor, Berton Tables as well. Uh, and, and it was a, a special event. This is my thanks to everybody as well. Well, that's great. That's great. We appreciate that. I thought we'd turn to, you know, you got, uh, you got a new room, uh, there in, uh, what is it, outside of Boston or in Boston proper? Yes, it's 15 minutes north of Boston. Uh, it's in a city called Malden and it's a, a, a very nice, uh, high-end private club. Uh, it's a, it my, it's a dream come true for me. I've had a club before in New Hampshire. It was more like a sports bar. And my intention was to uh, actually move billiards outside of a bar. I want to make it into a room like we had in, in, in back in the day. Absolutely. Yeah. 
That's and, uh, great. And, and it's a beautiful room, and, and I think people would love to come and see the room with all high-end equipment from Brunswick to Bretons and Cheviot and, and so forth. Well, great. Uh, how many Bretons do you, do you have? I have five Breton tables. Fantastic. They're all yeah. five by tens, and yeah. right? Wonderful. Yeah. Okay. And you have how many gold crowns? I have eight gold, round, gold crown fours, Brunswick, brand new. Oh, great. Well, that's... I have one in the showroom. We have a showroom. Uh, I have one Breton in the showroom, and I also have one Brunswick gold crown four in my private room. We have oh. a private room in the club as well. Oh, well, that's great. So um, yeah. how, how do they find out uh, about you? Do you have a website or something so they can find out how to become a member? Yeah, my website is very easy. It's www.amazingbilliards.com, amazingbilliards.com. And it's, uh, I'm, I'm all over the Facebook and the Internet, so I'm easy to find. Great. Okay, well, good. They can check that out. Sure. Um, and I wish you the best with the room. And, uh, Thank you, Steve. And I'm, I'm sure you'll do uh, very well. Um, one of the reasons I've been conducting these interviews is kind of a precursor to the Verhoeven Open. We're having a lot of international players coming, as we do each year. And uh, sure. uh, obviously, you're one of the uh, dominant uh, American players. And, uh, you know, tell me about the uh, Verhoeven Open or the Karim Cafe International Tournaments that we've ran. Uh, you've played in, gosh, how many of them? I played in all of them. I never missed one. Oh, no uh, kidding. How many is that? <laughs> I don't know. Since Sang Lee was around, he started doing the international tournament in Karen Cafe. Uh, I've always made an attempt to come because it's a very special place to go and play billiards. I think Michael King does a wonderful job on running the tournament and, and inviting all these beautiful players from all over the world, uh, anywhere from Bloomdahl, Codron, Saginaw, Eddie Lepins. I can go on and on, so many names. Uh, now we have a special guest today, Eddie Mercy, never been in the States before, which was uh, really a big treat, and I respect that a lot. And I think, you know, when we go to, uh, you know, I go to every year, and I always make the final at Karim Cafe, and uh, and I have, uh, I've always been able to compete with all the Europeans. Uh, now, can we beat all of them? No, of course not. We have to be realistic. But overall, we give them a good run for their money. So, you know, sometimes you beat two or three, but then... Uh, you know, you cannot beat all of them. So that's how strong they are. And, uh, of course, we learn so much when they come around, and, and uh, this is all about uh, learning and loving the game and competing as well. Absolutely. Well, I know you'll bring, uh, bring your A game with you, so there's no doubt in my mind. You I know, you, you, you touched on a subject, uh, uh, about the international players and, uh, and, and how well you play against them. I've been asking them in the other interviews that I've, I've done with the various, uh, players, and one of the questions I ask them is about, uh, why the American players uh, are not the dominating force that, for example, you find in some of the European countries. And I was wondering if uh, you have any thoughts about that. Well, there's a variety of reasons. I mean, I can, I can name a few main, main ones. Uh, uh, one of the main reasons, first of all, we are a big country. And it's very difficult for us to travel all over the country and to see each other play at, at a strong level. Uh, the only time I actually see Pedro or Hugo Petino is if I'm in New York or I'm in San Diego or they come to Malden, to Boston. Uh, those are the one, one of the few times that we see each other to play at a high level. But, it, you know, overall, it's just, it is so difficult for us to travel. Uh, in the plane six hours or five hours, where in Europe, you know, uh, uh, the countries are so near each other and they are so small. So it's easy for them to hop in a, pl in a train for two hours to go from Belgium to Holland, an example, or or uh, from Germany to France, three hours, you know. So so those are the main issues. Uh, well, maybe so, we ought maybe we ought to come up with our own, you know, like state called the billiard state, and then we can all all the billiard players can just like move to that state, and then we won't have to travel so much. <laughs> that would be nice. That would be nice. That would be nice. Just a thought. Yeah. Of course, it would be nice. Yes, I would love to see that. But hopefully, we are we are improving in this country. I think you see that, Steve. You're with us in the USBA. I think we're progressing on on many different areas. 
and uh, we just need a little bit of uh, of uh, support from sponsors to come aboard and 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 uh, get us to to the right direction. Absolutely, you know, it's you also mentioned. Uh, you know, uh, promotion and, and getting sponsors, uh, having, uh, uh, having Kazoom, uh, uh, stream our Verhoeven Open, uh, our tournament in New York City. That certainly should be a good thing for all of us, I hope. Well, I, I really have to give all the credit to you, Steve, because you have done a wonderful job in terms of getting Kazoom to the picture to interview, I mean, to, to, uh, to record the tournament, the, uh, you also got to give you credit for interviewing all the players, including myself, for doing that. That's a great idea, which we didn't think about. I mean, you always come out with ideas that are really great for the game, and, and I know uh, your heart is in the right place, of course, and, and it, it means a lot. So um, You can that's, keep that's going good. on. I'll take all those compliments. No, you sorry. Are, well, <laughs> you deserve it because you earned it. Well, uh, Anna, uh, uh, since I'm getting this good information from you, and I've been asking the other players, I certainly want to ask you this as well. Uh, do you have a practice regime or some sort of system like you're going to be preparing next? Of course, you just got back from uh, from Columbia, but you're going to be preparing now for uh, the Verhoeven Open. Uh, what, what Do you have a, a system you use to prepare for a tournament? Well, to be honest with you, my lifestyle doesn't allow me to practice five, six hours a day because I'm always working and I'm always trying to, you know, I have a big responsibility at work as well as home. And it's not so easy for me to spend time so much uh, at the room because I'm constantly working and, uh, and whenever chance I get, I get on the table for an hour or two just to stay next to the table to be, uh, you know, to have the billiard rhythm. But, uh, you know, uh, to be honest with you, I think the, the, best way to do like I spoke to Pedro about his practice and Pedro says I work four days a week from open to close no time to practice but I'm off three days a week so I take the three days and I practice six hours a day that's ah, a good system. that okay. is it yes you know and he has it he has his, his life more simpler than mine just because I'm, I'm involved with so many different businesses yes and it's not easy for me to to really put the time into the video table but I'm very lucky that uh, that I perform as good as I do with almost no practice, you know. I play with people all the time in my club, and, and you know, this is my practice. Absolutely. Well, yeah. we all got our ways of doing it, and and I think whatever works obviously works for you because uh, your your record and your performance uh, uh, certainly uh, indicates that. Um, yeah. Other things that. Um, uh, just any questions that uh, the traveling part, you know, gosh, you just got back from uh, Columbia. Uh, a problem with that? Uh, time zones, traveling, are you someone that uh, can handles that well, or is it uh, bothersome? Well, traveling time is always a problem with everybody, with all the players, I'm sure. Because uh, you travel, you're wasting so much energy, you're on, you're on the road for 10 or 12 or 14 hours, then you go to South America, but I always like to go there like uh, early, like a day or two before, so I can have the time to relax and, and, and maybe practice for about three, four hours before I play. And that's what we did in Colombia. So we went there a day ahead of time, and we had almost full day to practice, and that was good session for us. So um, yeah, in terms of traveling, of course, it's difficult for everybody, you know. But uh, you know, we enjoyed it. We love the game, and we look forward to playing competition. Yes. Um, a couple things, and I've asked the other players this too, so um, okay. I don't know if we have a ranking system with the USBA or not. I think we do. Um, do you know how you're ranked or rated in the United States? Are you? Well, I don't know if, if it's been updated yet, but I have won. In, I played in the last three tournaments this year, and I've won all three of them. So I don't know uh, how the ranking system works and what am I up. I'm always on the top five or six, but sometimes I go number two, sometimes I go number three and four. So right now we're in the top five somewhere. Um, I don't know exact number what I'm at, to be honest with you. Sure. Well, anywhere toward the top sounds pretty good to me. Um, yeah. Uh, how, about, uh, how about your average? Do you kind of keep track or do we have, uh, does our organization or do you have someone that keeps track of your average? 
Well, for the last year, my average was uh, almost 1.2, 1.187 uh, for the whole year, general average. Yes. But this year, um, this year I don't know. I think it's around this area as well because my hours are always the same. I think it's 1.2, 1.1 to 1.2 all the time. And uh, I like to play 1.5, of course. But uh, like I said, it's, uh, it's, uh, it takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of devotion to the game. And uh, I just don't have it at the moment. Sure, I I understand. Uh, we yeah. all we all have our jobs to uh, to do. Of course. Uh, well, I I want to thank you for for taking your time out, uh, just getting back uh, from traveling and being in that tournament, and so I appreciate the the time you you uh, spend to uh, to talk to uh, talk to us. Uh, anything, any comments or anything else you'd like to say? Yeah, I, w- I would like to advise the all the American players uh, uh, that uh, you know the best way to improve your game is. Really, don't be afraid to ask a better player how to improve your game and how to play certain shots or how to to uh, to uh, to learn more about the game to advance. You know, and and do not be afraid to ask because most uh, top American players or most top Amer- European players would love to answer you because this is what we like to do. We like to promote the game uh, and and uh, make it easy as much as possible to all the players. So Ab- this is the absolutely. advice I will give to American players. Well, that's great advice. Mason, thanks again for taking the time, and it's good talking with you. And uh, I uh, hope to see you in New York or sometime.